Hi, and welcome to our Election Day prayer time. Uh, we've done one of these live at 7.30 this morning, and this one we decided to tape so that you wouldn't have all of the ads that came up during our 7.30 broadcast. Um, we, as leadership, felt like it was important for us to encourage the church to pray today. Obviously, we need to be in prayer all the time. We need to be in prayer for our nation regularly as well. But with today, the, the uh, feeling in the nation, the, um, some feelings of fear, no matter what side you're on. I've talked to people who vote one way and another group that voted a whole different way and both feel this fear and, and uh, this sense of wonder as to what's going to take place. And I guess I just want to remind all of us as believers that, first of all, we are not to live in fear. It's not who God called us to be. We are called to be believers who trust that God is in control. And so as we pray for our nation today and as we pray for the results of the elections that are going to take place, I hope that you will just pray that God's will will be accomplished and that as believers we'll be able to walk away from today, believing and knowing that God is in control. And there's a passage of scripture that we often use when we talk about prayer and we talk about uh, our nation. And it's 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7, verse 14. And it says this, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. And we love that last part about God healing our land. Uh, but there's a lot of steps in this passage of Scripture that take place prior to that. And the, and the first step really is to humble ourselves and to pray. And to humble yourself means to really be not in control. And so as much as it's important for us as believers to go out and to vote, and I voted, and I hope that you voted, uh, at some point we have to humble ourselves to the point of realizing that we are not the ones that control what's taking place. And so we've got to trust God. So it says that we need to humble ourselves, we need to pray, we need to seek Him and seek His will. Sometimes as believers it's easy for us to, to interpret what we want as what He wants. But that's not always the case. In fact, a lot of times it's not the case. And then it says that we need to turn from our wicked ways. And I would say one of the, one of the things that Christians get snared up in is selfishness and in uh, wanting things the way we want them when we want them. And I would, I would put that under the category of being wicked. And then hear from heaven. So take some time and we're going to do that as we do this time in prayer where we're going to just pray and ask God to speak to us. And uh, then he'll hear from heaven, he'll forgive our sins, and he'll heal our land. We love the forgive our sins and heal our land, but we oftentimes don't look to the first part of that. So my encouragement today as we pray for our nation and we pray for our state and we pray, uh, just pray for our elected officials, we pray for our city, as we pray through all of those things, my encouragement to you is to trust God. Uh, I am somebody that watches politics. It almost becomes kind of a sport. And uh, I'll argue with people on Facebook and, and all that stuff, and that's fine and that's fun. But at the end of the day, what really matters is that we are a people who trust God, who believe that He is who He says that He is, that He is in control, even when sometimes it feels like He's not. He is. And so as we start this time of prayer, we are going to start uh, by praying for our nation. And part of that is to pray for a healing in our nation. For the last few election cycles, we've seen our, our nation, I believe, become more and more divided uh, along political lines. And, uh, and so I think we as a church need to pray. We have people from all different political parties that come to River of Life, and that's great. I love the diversity of that. But I think we need to be in prayer that God will begin to mend relationships will begin to put back together what seems so broken right now. And so I'm going to lead in a prayer, and then there'll just be some music, and you can have a, a time where you just pray right where you are, 
and, uh, and then I'll come back and, and explain what we're going to pray for next. So let's just pray. God, right now, I lift up this nation to you. I thank you, Father, because um, you love us. And God, whatever side of the aisle we may find ourselves on, God, you do love us. And I pray, God, that this nation would, that first of all, your will would be accomplished today. And that, God, whatever the outcome, that, God, we will uh, trust you and know that you are God and that you are in control. Lord God, I pray for a healing in the United States of America, that, God, we will, um, that it will start with the church, and that, God, any divisiveness or division that would come uh, through your people, that, God, that would cease, and that, God, we would become uh, known as those who would bring healing and be relational. God, I just pray, Father, that everything that takes place today, as people go out and they do their duty and they vote. I pray, Father, that you would, uh, that first of all, there would be no uh, fraud, that it wouldn't be, uh, that there wouldn't be uh, cause for alarm as far as things being rigged, but that God, uh, that people's votes would count and that, uh, Lord God, that you would have your hand on everything that takes place. Father God, we do trust you. And Lord, part of that is that humbling ourselves and understanding that you are God. And even when we don't understand uh, why things happen maybe the way that they do, we do trust you and we know that you have a plan and a purpose. And I pray, God, that we would be a people that would walk that out and trust you. Father, I just rest this election in your hands. And, and God, I pray that as we pray over these next few moments, that, um, God, you would give us a peace in our heart and in our mind to know that you're in charge. And we just thank you for that in your name. Just take some time right now and continue to pray for our nation and for today's election.
Now that we're back from that, uh, I'd like to encourage you to pray for our state. Maybe you're watching this and you're not from Montana, and that's okay. Pray for the state that you're in. Uh, not only for the state, but for those who are going to be elected today, those who are already in office. Um, and I think that it would be good for us to pray for, uh, for those who are in office who call themselves Christian. I think uh, sometimes power can um, put us in a position where we begin to not act the way that we should. And so, uh, and we, we would all be in a position where that could happen to any one of us. And so I, I just think it's important for us to pray for those who are in our state offices and in government that um, do believe in Jesus Christ, who do have a relationship with him, that uh, they would not be corrupted by a system that is oftentimes corrupt, but that they would um, really lean on God and hear his voice that it wouldn't be something that they just talk about when it's convenient, but it would be something that they live out. And so I want to just take the next few moments and I want us to pray for uh, our state, but also to pray for those in government who uh, call themselves believers and followers of Jesus Christ. So let's pray right now. God, I pray right now for those in our state who are in a position of leadership. And Father, I know that come the election cycle, it's it's popular and convenient to call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ. But it's another thing to actually walk that out and to live it. And so, Father, I just pray for those who are called by your name, who profess to be a believer in Jesus Christ. God, I know that it's easy to think that I would not be corruptible, that I would not put myself into a position where I would uh, give in or succumb to the corruption that can be in political positions. And I know that many men and women have found themselves in that position and then have begun to compromise. And God, I just pray against compromise. I pray that those who call themselves by your name, that God, they would live justly and that they would speak truth, even when it isn't politically expedient for them, that God, they would do what needs to be done the way that it needs to be done, no matter what the political cost may be to them. And God, I just pray, Father, for their protection. I pray, God, that, that you would uh, protect them and protect their families. And God, give them wisdom and direction as they lead, uh, as they lead us. And uh, we just thank you for that. And we rest them in your hands. In Jesus' name. I encourage you right now, as you think about different people in our state government, that you would uh, even pray for them by name. And... Uh, Maybe we don't know who's going to be in our government yet uh, as the election is still going on, but pray for both sides then. A lot of times we think of people that are in the other party as our enemy, and that's not a good way to think. We need to understand that God has called us to love everyone. And if you have a problem with somebody, try praying for them and watch how all of a sudden your attitude can shift. So take a moment right now and pray.
Okay, now I want us to take some time and I want us to pray for East Missoula. Um, those of you who are from River of Life, who attend on a regular basis, you know that God has been doing some amazing things in East Missoula, and they are beyond anything that we could have ever hoped or imagined, really. The way that God has opened doors for us to minister to, um, to His people. And so, we're very excited about the, uh, the new building that God has provided for us, for us to be able to put a youth center and our boxing club and, and to be able to rearrange our food bank and clothing closet so that it'll be more effective in what it does. Um, but I also know that I, we've got to make sure that we don't become comfortable in what we're already doing because God's calling is so much bigger and greater than what He's already showed us. And so I just want to encourage you today as we think about different aspects of our nation and our state, that we don't forget about the, the area that we're called to. And so I want to just challenge you to pray for East Missoula today. There are so many families that are hurting right now in the midst of a down economy and, and all the things that, that sometimes those are the areas that are hit worse than others. And so, um, first of all, let's pray just for the community in general. But second of all, let's pray that God will continue to open up doors of opportunity for us. There's one thing that God has blessed us with is um, that we have influence in our community. And that's something that you, that, that's so vital for the church today, that we can have some influence and that we can be the, the, a hope dealer, so to speak, in our community. And so I just want to challenge you. Let's just pray. Maybe you can think of specific needs that you know of in East Missoula. But even if you can't think of specific needs, if you just take a moment right now and, uh, and pray just in general over that community, the Clinton area, Missoula. We, obviously, our reach is greater than just the East Missoula area, but we, we know that there are so many needs that are right around us. So join with me as I pray, and then we'll take some time to pray on our own. Let's pray for our community. Heavenly Father, God, I lift up East Missoula to you, and I thank you, Father, for all that you do. I thank you, God, for the influence that you've given us in our community, and I pray, Father, that you will help us to be a light in the darkness. And God, I pray for the families of East Missoula. I know that there are so many that are hurting and in this down economy they find themselves maybe without work, without food, or without the basic necessities that they may need. And God, I pray first of all that you would help them to realize that there is hope. Second of all, God, I pray that you'll give us opportunity to do what we can to meet those needs on your behalf. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would um, continue, Lord, to just shine your hope in our community, in East Missoula, in Missoula, in Clinton, in Bonner. Lord, throughout the area that you've called us, I pray, Father, that your hope would shine brightly. And God, I just pray, Lord, for those specific families. I think of Harold today, who, uh, Lord, finds himself without a home and Lord, as we work with him to try and figure out a, a, a good scenario. And for Jim, I pray that you would uh, give, give us wisdom in the way that we help him. God, for others who are in need that just, just find themselves in a position where they don't know what tomorrow holds, I pray, God, that they will learn through a relationship with your people that you hold tomorrow and that, God, they don't need to live a life of fear, but that they can walk in victory knowing that you are in control. So God, as we take these next few moments and pray for East Missoula, I pray, God, that you'll even remind us of specific needs that we need to pray for and that, God, you will be glorified and lifted up in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and take a few moments right now and continue to pray for East Missoula.
Now I want to challenge you to spend a few moments and pray for our church. I know that as we pray for East Missoula, it's easy to also kind of tie in praying for River of Life. Um, it's been amazing to watch not only how God has opened up doors for us to have more and bigger tools to be able to do the job that He's called us to, but to watch that influence within our community grow. And I think about relationships that we have with the community council and and to have you know just them stop in at the church. Just the other day I had, had somebody from the community center stop in and bring us the name of an elderly lady who just needed a little bit of extra help as far as some stuff that street teams could do. And I was so excited to just think that we've, we've got such a good relationship with our community that they understand that's what we're here to do. And so that's neat. And then the fire department and, and just some of the different people who are, uh, who are people who have been in East Missoula for a long time and, and getting to have this relationship with them. And so I just would ask that we would pray right now that God would continue to give us favor in our community. Um, we are definitely a church that believes strongly in community. And so I want to just, I want that to be nurtured and to grow. So will you just take a few moments right now and let's just pray not only for River of Life and for all the things that God, all the doors that God's going to open up and has opened up for us, but also just pray that God would continue to grow our influence in the community, not for our sake, but for His sake. And uh, so let's pray right now. God, I thank you so much for River of Life Church. I thank you, God, that you have done so much in such a short amount of time. And God, I wish that uh, I could sit here and, and claim credit, but Lord, it's been you, and you have done amazing things, bigger than we could hope or dream. And Lord, I know that the biggest days of ministry and of reaching our community are ahead of us. And so, Father, I pray that you would give the leadership wisdom and direction as we make decisions. I pray, God, that you would continue to grow people in you, that they would come to a realization of how amazing you are, and that God, they wouldn't be, that we would not be a church of, of, uh, of people who sit in the chairs and watch as other people do, but we would be a, a church of doers. God, that we would never become a church that is a clubhouse for Christians, but Father, that we will always remember our calling, which is to be a hospital to the hurting. And God, I just praise you for that calling, and I praise you that you've allowed us to uh, do the things that we've done already. And I know, God, that you are going to um, show us new things and new ways that we can impact and make a difference. So, Father, as we spend these next few moments praying for our church, I pray, God, that uh, our prayer would be more than anything, that we would find your heartbeat and that, that we would pursue it with all of our heart, with everything that we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a few moments right now and pray for River of Life if you would.
I want to take a moment right now and I want us to spend some time in prayer. Um, we have many specific needs that we do pray for on a fairly regular basis. Um, but today I would like to pray, we, if you've been at River in the last few weeks, you know that we have been continually praying for uh, Jeff, who is diagnosed with uh, stage four cancer, my cousin Cal, who also uh, is suffering from cancer. There's a gentleman named Jeff that none of, that we don't know, but uh, we, we were asked to pray, and he is a 41-year-old gentleman who is in stage four cancer as well. And so um, if there's one thing that uh, the leadership at our church has felt a call to, and that is to uh, be a church of prayer. And uh, as we move towards that, as we continue to grow in our prayer life, uh, I, I'm believing that God is going to use the prayers of this church, of the people of this church, of our church family, to impact uh, real life situations. And so uh, I think sometimes we can get into this habit where we pray for things and we kind of don't really believe that anything's going to change. Faith is, is really believing that what we're saying and what we're asking for, uh, that it's possible. Not because of us, but because of Him. And so I just want to challenge you as we pray, specifically for these three gentlemen. They're all young, all under the age of 50. Uh, just need a touch from God. And so would you, as long as we're having this time of prayer, would you just take a few moments right now and, and call out to God on their behalf and uh, do it passionately. There's something about going before God passionately and believing that what you're saying is possible. And so we're just going to pray. I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now, and then we'll take a few moments and we'll pray for them. Maybe you know of other needs that, are, that, that we are not even aware of, or maybe there's other people within our body or, or, or uh, within your neighborhood or family that, that need prayer, please take time to pray for them as well. Uh, I just mentioned these three because they're they are such uh, harsh situations, but I'm so glad that our God is bigger than cancer. And so let's just, let's take a moment right now and let's pray. God, I lift up Jeff, I lift up Cal, and I lift up Jeff to you. And God, you see this cancer and you know what a scary word that is and what a horrible diagnosis that is. But God, I am so thankful because you are bigger. You are able. Your word says that by your stripes we can claim healing. And so God, as we spend this time in prayer right now, I pray, Father, that you would remind us of the fact that you're in charge and that there is no word that is scary to you. There is no situation that is bigger than you. And God, we're going to spend these next few moments, and we are going to cry out on these guys' behalf. And Lord, there's other needs I know that we need to be praying for as well. Other people who even right now, as, as they're watching this, they maybe need a touch from you. They need a touch uh, from your Holy Spirit. And God, I just pray, Lord, that you would... Uh, reach down and that you would minister to them and that you would bring healing to them. We trust you today, God, and we just cry out on, on behalf of those who are in need. In Jesus' name, amen.
I want to thank you for participating in this time of prayer. And uh, I want to encourage you to be faithful in your prayer life. It's not so much a matter of scheduling a certain amount of time every day. It's more a matter of a lifestyle of prayer. where We can come to a place where we understand that we need to be in communication. We talk at River of Life a lot about the fact that we are anti-religion. Don't believe in religion. It's relationship. If you're going to have a relationship with somebody, though, you need to talk to them. You need to take some time to listen and to allow them to speak to you. So my challenge to you is don't let this just be a one-day thing. Maybe you've joined in to this prayer time because of some fear about what could happen to our nation today or what is happening. Don't, don't do this just at those moments of fear because that's not relational. Relationship says, God, I want to talk to you. I want to know you day in and day out in the good times and the bad times. I want to have a relationship with you. So I want to challenge you. Make sure that you uh, pick up your, your times of prayer. Maybe it's while you're driving to work. Maybe it's on your way home. Maybe it's uh, taking 10 or 15 minutes just out of your day to set it aside and say, God, I, I want relationship with you. So as we close this time of prayer, I'm going to encourage you. We're going to, let the, we're going to have the worship music continue to play after, after I'm done praying this prayer. And uh, we're going to just ask that uh, you take a few moments to just be quiet and allow God to speak to you. Sometimes we, we fill our prayer time with us talking, but God wants some of that time so that he can speak to you. And I'm believing that he will speak to you today. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time that we've spent praying for our nation, for our our country, our city, our, our state, for people specifically. And God, I just pray, Lord, that in these next few moments that you will speak to us and that God will hear your voice and that we will become a people that are familiar with your voice so that when you talk, we know the direction that you're leading us. We thank you, God, and I pray, Lord, that our prayer life would increase and that our time with you would become more valuable to us. And that, Lord, in the busyness of life, that we will know you and hear you. We give you all the praise and all the glory in your name. Amen. Thanks for joining us.